Live from the Sands Convention Center in Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at AWS reInvent 2014. Brought to you by headline sponsors Amazon and Trend Micro. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are live at Amazon Web Services reInvent. This is theCUBE, our flagship program, where we go out to the events and extract the signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host, Stu Miniman, uh, wikibon.org, and our next is Morgan Gihart, uh, Senior Director of Products at Citrix. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank you very much, John. Thanks for having me. So, we've been covering Citrix, and we actually did in our first year, the theCUBE's our fifth year, so we did Citrix Synergy. Right. Um, big event, more, um, you guys have a huge ecosystem. Yep. You're not new to the cloud, and certainly you guys have been in the uh, the product business for a long time. Give us a quick update on what's going on here for Amazon for you guys. Right. Why are you here? What are you doing with Amazon? What are your customers looking right. at doing? Absolutely. Well certainly, you know, Citrix has a tremendous presence in the enterprise across our entire portfolio, whether it's Zen App, Zen Desktop, Zen Mobile, um, or our Netscaler portfolio. And like pretty much all enterprises these days, they're looking to extend their data centers with the capacity that's available in the cloud and especially the capacity that's available in AWS. So you know, our, our goal is to help our customers make AWS look like it's just a natural extension of their own data centers and their own data center capacity. And that's a combination of the ability to use Zen App and Zen Desktop to stand up farms in AWS, either in isolation or bridged back to the, uh, bridged back to their own data centers. Um, it's using Netscaler as an extension to extend the network from their own data centers into uh, AWS and back with full security and full network extension uh, from AWS back to their data centers. And that could be for delivering Zen App, Zen Desktop, but it's also, of course, just using Netscaler as a front end for the next generation of mobile and web apps that are being delivered out of AWS as well. You know, I was talking to Stu before he kicked off about our networking audience love. And for some reason, networking videos get all the, the best <laughs> views. Right. Um, it's weird, it's, I guess it's not weird. We love networking too. Right. Um, but James Hamilton was on, certainly he's a big draw. But what's interesting about Amazon here, normally when we do the, last year we did the Amazon show, everything was born in the cloud. Right. But this year we have multiple guests come on that are doing the hybrid thing. Yep. So, Nice mix that Amazon's going down. That's in your wheelhouse for Citrix, this notion of hybrid too. Right. You guys are in that great business. So what is the key dynamic for being that hybrid? So here's on-premise, but I also want to do cloud. What are you right. seeing there? Obviously you probably agree, you shake shaking right. your head. Yep. What is the dynamic and what is the new formula? Right, absolutely. So there's um, a couple of things that, that we see as key. So first and foremost, while the network is critical, and obviously it's a big deal for me, it's really not about the network, it's about the apps. Um, so first and foremost, you've got to keep the app and the app workload front and center. What we try to do at Citrix is make the deployment and the configuration of our stack as transparent as possible, regardless of whether it's running on-prem or running in AWS. Because from the IT professional's perspective, they really shouldn't have to look at doing things fundamentally different to invoke AWS. It really shouldn't be about, for example, taking something and then having to quote unquote move it to AWS. It should rather be the perspective is, there's AWS, there's all that capacity, how can I make it look like a natural extension of my own, of my own data center? Uh, from a networking perspective, this is one of the big benefits that we see of Netscaler. You know, Netscaler running in AWS does the exact same things that Netscaler does running on premise. The configuration model is the same, it's actually literally the same binary. So as a customer is taking and looking at extending their data center with AWS, they have an application that is built in using Netscaler, they don't have to worry about whether the networking footprint that they use in AWS has to be changed because the networking footprint of Netscaler in AWS is the same as the networking footprint of Netscaler on prem. I think the other big thing is, is that from the, from the user's perspective, they actually should know whether they're running in AWS or, run, or the, the infrastructure is running in AWS or running um, on-prem. The, the application should behave um, exactly identical. And then of course the benefit is, is, is that by using AWS behind the scenes, 
the IT organization gets all the benefits of you know, not having to stand up and tear down servers, being able to not only get capacity when they need it, but more importantly to give it back, which is actually from my perspective a key part of the cloud. Growing is actually a lot easier than shrinking. The, the key thing is the shrink. Yeah, so Morgan, you made some great points there. Yeah. It, it's really about making it simple and transparent for right. the users so that they don't need to understand it. Right. Now that being said, give us a little bit of insight as to you know, how Citrix solves these networking problems because obviously it's a little bit different doing mobile enablement if you right. own the environment versus going to the cloud. What's involved in that? And you know, I'm not sure that Citrix really gets as much credit as it should right. for being a significant player in networking. Right, right, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a good point. It's, um, you know, our, our networking business is now significant. We don't break it out, but it is, it is a, if you look back at some of our earlier earnings calls where we've made comments and things like that, it is easily a several hundred million dollar business. So it's a, it's a sizable and significant part of Citrix overall. You know, from, from our perspective, when we, when we break it down, I think the first thing is to understand the role that we play in networking. You know, our role within networking is not what we call transport. It's not routers and switches and pushing packets around. Really what our networking portfolio brings to the table is context. We know who the user is, we know where the user is going, um, specifically within the application, we know time to first byte, we know time to last byte, and we can bring all of that context to an application that's running in AWS. Um, so what that gives the IT organization is the same visibility into application performance when that application is running in AWS as if it was running in their own data centers. So that's obviously fundamental um, to standing a footprint up and ensuring that the user's getting you know, an, an, excellent, an excellent experience. I think the other big thing is, is that ideally, there should be the, the option to make the network extension itself as transparent as possible. So with a Netscaler running on-prem and a Netscaler running in AWS, we can literally set up a network extension between the two and um, encrypt that network extension so that it provides uh, security for data in motion and then even provide uh, WAN optimization services on top of that to accelerate the movement of data back and forth uh, between AWS and the on-prem data center. So that again, helps optimize the end user's experience, but also more importantly, um, it can, actually it's not more important, what's ultimately most important is the end user experience, but you know, almost of equal importance is it helps cuts down the cost, um, the transit cost. All right, so, so Morgan, I, I have to ask, last year at AWS, we had kind of those gasp moments when right. Amazon announced workspaces. Uh, right. A bunch of us came kind of, you know, running over to the Citrix booth, which was the largest partner booth right. at the show. Right. said, what does this mean? So we've had a year to let this sink in. Right. Uh, Amazon's talked about, you know, great growth in the environment. Right. Um, I haven't had a chance to talk to too many customers using workspaces. What has that done to the relationship? And uh, talk, talk about the importance of the relationship right. and how, how it, it might have changed Got over it. the last year. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously, um, Amazon is a very strategic partner for Citrix. You know, we're platinum sponsors. We've been platinum sponsors since day one. We offer Netscaler and other aspects of our portfolio via Marketplace, hourly, BYOL, and the new annual options. Um, you know, we do a tremendous amount of business with Amazon standing ZenApp and Zen Desktop in AWS. Uh, we still are seeing a tremendous demand for ZenApp and Zen Desktop in AWS because of the flexibility that it provides. You know, it's, it's an interesting industry, you know, I, my, my personal take is, and like I said, I'm a, I'm a networking guy, not a, um, I'm from the networking side of the business. There's better people than me to get into the, um, the nitty gritty of work, work, uh, workspaces versus what Citrix does on, on that side of the business. My personal take is, you know, the Valleys and ITs, it's, it's an interesting industry, right? Any two vendors that are over $100 million in revenue are almost guaranteed to have areas where they overlap. That's just kind of part and parcel of doing business in the industry these days. Um, we don't let it slow us down. Um, you know, our, our, per, our, our take is, is that you know, we stand by our products and what our products deliver. We focus on investing in those and we think that that differentiation clear, you know, wins out um, in the end. And if it doesn't, that's a Citrix issue. It's not, a, it's not an Amazon issue or anybody else's issue. Right, so I got to ask the hard question. And the hard question is something that well, probably won't be hard, but it's really the question that that uh, is on the minds of people out there. There's a lot of FUD in the market, and you know, we're pretty close to Citrix, and we've been following right. you guys, great company. Um, certainly got great tools like GoToMeeting, which we use all the time, but, but, in, but cloud, you got chops. You got chops and, and tech. 
Yep. Um, there's a perception out there, is, is Citrix winning? Uh, you know, the you know, OpenStack thing was went down, a lot of cloud stuff's kind of settling right. in. Just clear, clarify that for you. Is Citrix relevant in, oh, sorry, you work for Citrix, you say yeah. Right, but right, the customers right. out there are looking at all this noise. Right, right. What is, clarify all that noise and bring the signal to them. Right, absolutely. What's going on with Citrix? Absolutely. So, you know, certainly, you know, if you look at Citrix and our, our growth, it still pertains, um, or still growing. public companies, you can look at the assets. Yeah, yeah, yeah you, can, you can look at the financials. I mean, you can take a look at what independent third parties have said about, and the industry analysts have said about all of the Citrix products, whether it's Netscaler, Zen App, Zen Desktop, or Zen Mobile, leaders in all, all categories. Um, with numerous awards um, around. Culture. It's a technical culture. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's but a technical the innovation. Culture. Like if you had to go, just focus on the innovation. Customers out there, CIOs, right. tech geeks. Right. What's the innovation that you guys are doing? So, so fundamentally, you know, what's, what's driving us is the concept of what we call the software-defined workspace. You know, the, the, the software-defined workspace is fundamentally built around the precept that today, when a user is accessing an application, they are going to be mobile, they're going to be accessing that application likely from at least three, if not more devices over the course of the day. Um, but ultimately it's not a technology conversation, it is a user-centric user user issue because in the end, it's the user interacting with the workspace, not just the technology. So as we're, as we're innovating and bringing all of that together across our portfolio, both the front end or the client facing components that the users interact with on a daily basis, but also the back-end infrastructure, whether it's the networking infrastructure or the cloud platform infrastructure that's used to deliver that to the user, it's bringing all of that together in a cohesive portfolio that the user can deploy in their own data centers or in cloud data centers, or like you said, increasingly in a hybrid environment, a combination of the both. Um, and the goal is again to make sure that the user's getting the same app experience, again, regardless of whether it's one of these, a phone, a tablet, or in the end, it's going to be all three of those, if not more, over the course of a day. And what's the, what's the current things that you guys are riding right now? Because the wor virtual workspace, or the workspace, mm -hmm. um, is apps. I mean, right. we're like in a social world now. I right, mean, right, like, right. It's all about like collaboration, right. social business, stand up stuff yep. on the cloud, yep. pay as you go. It's a, it's a good strategy, it hangs together. Yep. What are the key milestones you guys are doing right now to say, okay, look at we're knocking it out of the park, we're solid here. What are the key solid grounds that you guys are building on? Certainly, so you know, the, the, if you look at ultimately what we see happening is as a user interacting, I need to access virtualized apps out of my data centers at certain cases, certain times. At other times, I may need to access an entire virtualized, uh, I may need to access an entirely virtualized desktop. At other times, it may be a native mobile application but it may be a no native mobile application that is delivered out of my, my company's data center, um, a, 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 if, a, if you will, private, private mobile application. Um, I'm going to need to have access to the data that is supporting all of those um, applications regardless of how I'm accessing it. Um, and I'm going to need it from a combination of trusted devices and untrusted devices across trusted networks and untrusted networks. So when we look at our milestones, um, our milestones are all about bringing all of that together. And this is what we call the uh, Citrix Workspaces Suite, um, which brings all of that package together. And again, the goal is, is that there's the user that's in, sitting in the middle of that yeah. circle of all of those services around they it and making it transparent. They want consumer experience. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, we appreciate it, Morgan. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Um, quickly, put the bumper sticker on the show. I'll give you the last word. Right. Uh, what's going on at Amazon? Why is it relevant? What's going on the show? What's the big vibe here? So obviously the big vibe, um, I think as, as, as we saw, was, was hybrid. Um, it's, it's, we expect this coming year to be the year when enterprises you know, really start to make the move on the production side of things and really start to bring things forward. We're tremendously excited about it. We're obviously very, very excited to have partnered with Amazon They're going back several years and we're looking forward to, uh, uh, to, to, to continuing to, to, to work with them to drive business going forward. All right, Morgan Gihart here from Citrix inside theCUBE. We'll be right back. More live coverage wall to wall here uh, in Las Vegas for Amazon reInvent. We'll be right back. This is theCUBE. Uh, I'm John Furrier with Stu Miniman. We'll be right back.